what full iron sets can you get for under a hundred pounds? Let me show you. Guys, how you doing? Welcome back to a brand new video. Simon down here at Bertha Golf Lab and I've got a beautiful set of Mizuno MP60s. And before I get into how much I got these for, let's recap from last episode. So if you're new to the channel, welcome. In this series of bargain review, I look at old equipment that I still think has value. I buy it for a very good price and then I give it away at the end of the episode. So congratulations to Ray Ford who won the R9 driver from my last bargain review, I got this R9 driver, mint condition, hit it about 340, um, and I got it for about 65 pounds. And everyone in the comment section, or the majority, wants to see what kind of iron set and what, how much can I get them for. More importantly, what do they feel like, what am I looking for, and how do they perform? So if you want to be in the chance to obviously win these irons, all you got to do is like the video, subscribe if you're new, and leave me a comment down below what you want to see in the next episode of Bargain Review. I'm actually going to be making a new golf bag up of all the clubs that basically I'm still giving away that I haven't already given away, um, and I'm going to be taking them to the Adidas Invitational at the Grove Golf Club. I've never played it, I've heard really great things, and I'm looking to make a really good video out of that. And I'm going to be taking the full set of three to pitch and wedge Mizuno irons, as well as my Homer clubs and the other clubs that I haven't sent yet, um, uh, and to make a new bag, basically a bargain bag of golf clubs that just look unbelievable. So Simon, tell us how much did you get these for? £80. That's £10 a club, three to pitch and wedge, which is a full set, not like your five to pitch and wedge nowadays, three to pitch and wedge, so eight irons in total, £10 each, including postage. I'll show you where I found them on eBay. They were set at £120 and I went in with a best offer of 80 and it got accepted within about 20 minutes. I couldn't believe it and I thought it was going to be too good to be true. But when I opened them up, had a look, they're in mint condition. They've hardly been hit at all. The clubs look amazing in general um, and I just couldn't wait to obviously give them a hit. Talk about the irons themselves. They were made in about 2006, 2007, something like that. Mizuno forged metal 1025 carbon steel good looking serial numbers all over them so i know they're legit r300s now that is the only downside but i wouldn't let that put you off if you find a great set of irons on ebay facebook wherever you might find them and their reg flex not stiff or x stiff not stiff whatever it is it doesn't make a huge amount of difference in terms of value of what this club, and I'm going to show you basically the run of hits I have with these clubs from pitch and wedge all the way to three iron. Um, it doesn't make that much difference. Yes, if you're spending a thousand pounds on a set of irons, make sure you've got the right length, lie, stiffness, bend profile, you name it. However, for 80 pounds, a full set of these, you can't turn that down purely for the fact that it hasn't got an S instead of an R on the shaft. So obviously I need to get a yardage gap, I need to know how far these are all going and these are very traditional lofts. So the 7 iron set at 35 degrees which is higher lofted than any blade that's come out this year in terms of the market. So if you're looking um, at the MP20s for example, they're set at 34 degrees. So these are very traditional and it'd be interesting to test let's say one of these 5 irons against the Epic Forge Callaway or the P790Ti where they're set, they're 7 irons at 27 degrees, the exact same loft as one of my five irons here. Now, I was really impressed because A, this is first thing in the morning, and B, I'm not the best iron striker. There's a reason I'm not on tour. However, I hit these all in a row and all of them pretty much went straight. Now, traditional Mizuno irons, I don't know what lie angle these are. Traditional Mizuno irons are a bit flatter than normal, mainly because the Japanese are slightly shorter than the rest of the population in the world. So they make the clubs flatter to suit their height. That's not necessarily a bad thing for me because I have a bit of a hook from the long drive. Having something a bit flatter actually straightens out a lot of my shots and actually gives me a high block right, which isn't as destructive as a snap hook. So when I was hitting through these irons, they all felt great out the middle. I caught a couple of them out the toe, but I didn't feel I lost too much. Don't get me wrong, these aren't forgiving. These aren't cavity back. These aren't for high handicappers. And whoever I give these to, 
please play off either single figures or you're getting down single figures because otherwise these are going to be very difficult. However, not necessarily a bad set of irons to buy for a winter range session where you want to focus on middling everything. It kind of gets lost in cast irons, cavity backs. The bigger the head, sometimes you're not focusing on trying to flush it out of the middle because it's so forgiving off all the face. Whereas these, you're going to feel it, especially on a cold winter day. If you don't hit these flush out the middle, it's going to hurt. cannot get over this three iron. It is a beautiful looking club and yes, it's going to be awful if I don't flush this thing. However, when I middled it, it went a mile. And it had a lovely flight on it, even though it had an R300 head. Mainly because it's got such a small design. The centre of gravity is basically in the face. The majority of driving irons nowadays are very big, very forgiving, very powerful. But as soon as you get to a certain ball speed, they just spin too much. They launch too high because of that big head. The lo a lot of people that like a traditional driving iron, i.e. this, you can't really call it a driving iron. However, it's going to give you that flight, especially into wind. I'd hit this further into wind than any driving iron out there on the market, purely because I could keep it under the wind and with very low spin as well. I was getting spin rates of like three and a half, where is if I was to hit the HMB or the P790, you're talking four and a half, five thousand, purely because of the head design. Grips are very important and these have all come with full corded grips hardly touched When you're buying second hand set of golf clubs If you get a great deal and you buy them for 60 quid or 100 pounds Whatever it is if they've got horrendous grips on them You're gonna have to get them re-gripped and unfortunately that's gonna cost you just as much as the set of iron So it's definitely something to obviously have a look out ask a question find out what kind of condition the grips are in because if they're awful Not like these for example it's going to cost you a lot of money. Guys, I want you to let me know what did you think of this deal. Did I get a deal of the century or do you think I got ripped off? Let me know in the comments down below. Now, going forward, I've done a very low handicap bag. I've done the super deep driver, which is for a quite high club head speed. These irons, which needs to have a good ball strike on the end of them. The wedge, the putter, the hybrid. If you feel that bag, that screams to me single figure handicapper. And obviously I gravitate to those clubs because that's what I'd want in my bag. However, going forward in the next series, let's say, which is gonna be very soon, I'm gonna look at a very high handicapper bag. I'm gonna look for ultra forgiving. I'm gonna look for high launching, longer distance, more spinning, more forgiveness kind of clubs. And we're going to do another bag because I like the idea of done a low handicap single figure bag now. I feel like I need to go to the opposite end of the spectrum. Go out of my comfort zone and find something that basically when you start the game, what should you be looking for? What manufacturers should you be looking for? What clubs and lofts and shafts and everything else like that should you be looking for? As I said at the start of the video, if you want to enter and win, like, subscribe, comment what you want to see in the next series or episode, what category... However, I'm going to look after these for a week or so. I'm playing at the Grove, as I said, which I'm looking forward to obviously doing a course test and giving you my thought on them. Um, as well as I've got a few other video ideas to use these for. Um, but once I'm finished, I will send these out to you. We've now done driver, wedge. I need to do my putter review still. The hybrid's already been sent. Um, uh, and obviously these irons and that's already five bargain reviews which I'm really um, excited about and obviously sending these out to you guys as a thank you basically for watching these videos um, I can't thank you enough can't thank you for the support and all the comments and um, uh, interaction that I get through this channel but testing has not been finished I've got some great ideas for these clubs in the meantime um, but if you can wait a week or so then obviously enter so guys have a great weekend Enjoy the nice weather as in England it's supposed to be nice this weekend. I'm going to be very excited to get these out at the Grove, my fifth round this year, um, and see how they obviously do. And I love to show you all that footage from the day as well, as well as the long drive um, session I've got the day after with a few other guys. Content's coming thick and fast. Guys, catch you later.